joining us now in the Cougar Council Room is Kelly Papinga, who returns to Provo, special teams coordinator for the Cougars, defensive assistant. We're waiting to hear the specifics of that defensive assignment. Maybe we should start there, Kelly, but first, an official welcome back to our, our new digs. No, it's awesome, man. Really, really appreciate you guys having me back on. It's great to be back uh, home. Honestly, I could say it feels like home. Walked in the office this morning. I was like, shoot, I feel like I've never left. You know, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was awesome, man. <laughs> so as like I walked in, and everything was, you know, there's a couple new remodels in there, but it just, it just felt right. It felt like home. It felt like I'd never left, honestly. So it was good. It was a good feeling. Obviously, you went to Virginia with the with the guys and had a great experience there. You guys did awesome work. Went to the Orange Bowl and everything. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Um, and then Boise State this last year. Um, facing BYU last year with Virginia and then facing BYU with Boise State. What was yeah. that experience like, it having was, been uh, a player and on staff? So I got to honestly say, more than any game in my career, I wanted to win. <laughs> more <laughs> than any so both of those games, more than any career, I was like, oh, I didn't want to beat these guys so bad. And, uh, you know, last year's game was a, just a shootout. And uh, just, you know, cra it was like uh, I was telling Matt Edwards during the game, Lavelle Edwards' grandson, I was like, this is exactly how Lavelle wanted it. Just a, <laughs> a shootout, no, no defense, you know, on either Old side. Old game. Yeah. Holy cow. And so that was, that was a tough one, especially coming back home and uh, just not playing. I mean, that was one of the worst performances I'd ever been a part of. And it was just – and they played – you know, BYU played lights out that night. And I give credit to those guys. And A-Rod did a great job of getting their guys ready. And then this last year – you know, I felt like we had a really good opportunity to have them, you know, come up to our place at Boise and, you know, shoot, they had a, another great night. You know, and credit to them, you know, the, the losing streak they had been on and, man, they got their guys ready to play and they were fired up. And, man, we gave up, you know, as a defense, we gave up some explosive plays in that game. And it just, yeah, I mean, I thought we had, you know, where the ball's on the, whatever, six-yard line and it's fourth down. And I'm like, gosh, we, we're going to win this game. And... Puka, you know, Puka ends up making one of the most amazing catches I've ever seen. And, you know, it, when you lose a game like that, you're just like, okay, you know, that just, that's an amazing play and kind of just tip your hat off to him. And, um, but yeah, it was, that was honestly walking off the field that day and then being able to just seeing all these guys and have to face them after, you know, shaking their hand. It's like, oh, it just, <laughs> you know, but it, it's, uh, you know, it, it was, it was good to be on that side, to be able to experience that. Um, but, uh, you know, I guess I, you can't beat them. you got to join them, right? Uh, so I'm back, yeah. <laughs> so I'm very, back man. It's a very unique dynamic because yeah, you're yeah. mad about the catch, but then you see Puka and you're like, hey, yeah, nice but, catch. Yeah, I'm yeah, on your team yeah, now. Yeah, exactly, like, man. Can you so, come you back? <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> you won in a way. Yeah. The season's not exactly over. Yeah. Okay, now back to the, uh, the original question, which is as a defensive assistant, we know you're going to do special teams. That's your specialty. How do you see your role on the defensive side panning out? Yeah, you know, I think – Really, at the end of the day, you know, Coach Hill wants to hire the two best guys available that are out there. And so however, however that plays out, you know, I'm not quite sure, but we want to get the two best guys that are going to fit um, what we do. And however that may be, shoot, he might end up coaching the D-line and, you know, I don't know. It, it, so I would say that where I've had my experience is coaching the defensive end edge guys, outside backers, and then coaching linebackers as well. And so I would say – Probably that's where I'm going to end up, but we'll see after we get these next two guys and how that all plays out. The D-line at BYU, in my opinion, the last several years, has not been good enough. That's the, and, and that's the key to great pass coverage. It starts with the rush and mm -hmm. so on. Yet the game has evolved to where the ball gets out a little quicker. People want sacks. It's like, well, there's not as many sack opportunities. Yeah. Everyone wants havoc. No one wants to drop eight, yeah. but sometimes drop eight's the best thing. How has defense sort of changed since you were here at BYU that you've learned as a co-defensive coordinator at Virginia, now yeah. Boise State, now coming back. Yeah, I just I think that you have to have different tempos, and it doesn't matter. Um, and every game is different. I just heard Coach Hill just say the same thing. There's some games where you're going to want to drop eight. There's some games when you're going to want to pressure. I think the best thing is having a scheme where you have different tempos. You have to. You got to be able to drop eight. You got to be able to rush four. You got to be able to rush five. You got to be able to rush six. You got to be able to do it all. And so, just you know, from what I know of their scheme that they've done for a long time. I know they do that, um, shooting the scheme. I just came from at Boise State, and what I did for a long time with Bronco, that's what where we were the most successful is when we were able to bring different tempos. And really, it's just 
you've got to be able to pressure and confuse the quarterback at all times. And that happens in all different tempos. So if you just sit there and rush four the whole entire game or bring five the whole entire game, like the quarterback is going to know. You drop eight all the time, right? So it's just you have to be able to change it up as the game flows and be able to keep that quarterback just guessing. And just, you know, that's, that's what I'm used to over the years, and I know that's what Coach Hill's used to, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to learn this new scheme that I've always wanted to know more about, just, you know, going against it, you know, from, you know, the time at Utah that the, those guys have had. So I'm anxious to get, be able to learn that. But uh, what I do know, there's going to be different tempos, and the quarterback is not going to be comfortable, and uh, that's what I'm excited about. Kelly Papinga is with us on BYU Sports Nation, new special teams coordinator and defensive assistant. We talked about some of your travels and your experience after you left BYU. Mm -hmm. How would you say you changed the most uh, as an assistant in your years away from Provo? Yeah, I would say, you know, I was just having this conversation with, with somebody is I wanted to stay at BYU forever. But honestly, leaving was the best thing that's ever happened to me, that's happened to my family. And to be gone for seven years and the lessons that I've learned and now being able to have the opportunity to come back and apply those things here, um, I'm excited about that. And I would just say the, the main thing that I've learned is you know, wherever you go, it's all about the people. And um, there was amazing people at Virginia, amazing people at Boise State. And uh, you know, I just, I'm excited about the things that they, they taught me and those people taught me and how they've changed my life and being able to now take those things and you know, apply it here. And, uh, you know, I know there's amazing people here. And so I just, and you guys know, you probably work with amazing people here in the studio, but that's what it's all about. And I'm excited about the players that they have here. I had a really good conversation with Keenan Peely the other night. And uh, just being able to hear him and listen to what he's looking for, it's exactly what I know Coach Hill and the rest of our staff is going to bring. And, uh, you know, I'm just excited to work with these student athletes again, be surrounded by this uh, this uh, culture that Kalani's built and just fired up to be around guys like you again. It's it's an exciting time. I'm going into up. the Big 12. For going to the Big 12, loud. man. It's exciting. Yeah. So it's just that's the other thing I think I've learned is there's a major difference from being independent and recruiting and then going to a Power Five school and recruiting. And I would say honestly, that's probably the biggest thing I had to adjust to. And I went from recruiting, you know, eight to ten guys for a position to now recruiting 12 to 20 guys for two spots. And it's just that's how competitive it is in the Power Five conferences. And so I, th I think that's going to be an adjustment for, for our staff in general of just the recruiting is going to be a lot more competitive than it's been. And it's going to need to be just playing it against the, you know, against these different opponents that we're going to be playing. And, and uh, yeah, that's, it's exciting. I'm excited for the opportunity, excited to be back, really appreciative for, you know, what Kalani's done to bring me back here and then be able to work with Coach Hill and learn from him. And, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun, man. Recruiting's always been a challenge, no matter where you go. BYU has its certain strengths mm. of hey, we have more access to LDS kids mm. than uh, other schools per se initially, but more more people are recruiting uh, the kids that BYU used to go for. Then there's the transfer portal. It's mm. it it is what it is, right? People complain about it. It's just part of the game. Whatever. Yeah. How different is recruiting now in, in just generally speaking, and how can BYU best attack it going in as a P5 now? Yeah, I think it's actually to our advantage um, of how it's changed. I think back in the day, it seemed like we had a hard time getting transfers in here. And now, just listen to Kalani and hearing the number that we have a chance to be able to bring in, I think that's that helps you be able to change, I think, your uh, roster faster. Like right? the institution is more apt to do it? I think so, yeah. And it just okay. seems like the numbers, it seemed like there was a limit on the number of mid-year transfers we could gotcha. bring back in the day. And now hearing what Klein was saying, it, things like, it sounds like that number's changed a little bit. And so that, I think that's to our advantage to be able to be able to fill some holes at some positions that we need to and be able to not have to sit there and wait to develop. Because it seems like, I, I just remember when I was here in the past, we were in the developmental uh, stage for a lot of that. Now it seems like, but just with the portal, you're going to be able to change things quickly, um, quicker, you know, than you have to wait for a, you know, a freshman to develop for one or two years. You know, I go back to think about Kyle. When Kyle came in in 2010, that, year, that team was really young, and Kyle had to get going in as a freshman. Now, we probably didn't want to play him as a freshman, and as the year went on, he played better and better. But you would hope that you would have a guy in place that, you know, could get Kyle ready for the next year. But um, I think just the portal is gonna it's gonna help us in that be able to fill those spots that we're that that we're looking for. Well, thankfully this profession is low pressure. I mean, all we're expecting you to do is find the next Fred Warner. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is that oh, too, easy. Is that too much easy. To ask? Oh yeah, Fred Warner, <laughs> Kyle. Those are those those guys are just <laughs> they're just knocking on our door right now, <laughs> ready just, to come. So. Just down at Tempe and Lehigh. Yeah. Let's go go.
Um, but no, we're yeah. I mean, we were we're just in a recruiting meeting this morning and talking about the guys that we need. And yeah. I mean, that's Coach Hill brought those both of those names up. Like these are the guys that we need to find, and we need to we need to be actively um, competitive recruiting against other schools for yeah. those guys. And that's that's really ultimately what those guys. You know, I wasn't involved. Um, Kyle was recruited by Coach Tidwell, but I co you know I was lucky enough to coach him. But I um, you know was in the recruiting process with Fred, Coach Hal, and I. And that was competitive right down to the very end. I mean, we're just holding on, you know, USC comes right in at the end. And, you know, luckily he ended up choosing here and, you know, ended up having a great career here and a great experience. But it's just, if you're not in those fights, you're really not probably getting the best players um, that we can get. And so we, yeah, we have to be in those recruiting battles. And I know with Coach Hill, he wants to be in those recruiting battles and that's exciting. That's, that's what I like to be doing as well in the recruiting process. Kelly, great to have you back. Great to have you in studio. We'll talk again soon, man. Oh, yeah. and here, oh, yeah. Hey, we got, we got a uh, swag box for you as well. So oh, more go, gear. Right, That's go. all I need is some more gear, man. So <laughs> appreciate it, guys. Thank you. You got it.